Good evening and welcome to the uh, Vivekananda Lecture Series 2022, a series of 12 lectures on the 12th of every month, uh, something that we've been doing from January through December 2022. Like I said, this is the fourth lecture and for the fourth episode we, of the series, we are pleased to have uh, Dr. M.R. Sitaram, uh, one of the founder members of SVYM as our guest. And the theme for today's uh, discussion is Vivekananda and the practice of practical Vedanta. Before I actually uh, start the session, a brief introduction uh, to Dr. Sitaram. Dr. Sitaram MR, uh, orthopedic surgeon at VMH, is one of the core team members associated with the Swami Vivekananda Youth Movement since its inception in 1984. He is also the executive director of VILD Foundation and managing trustee Disha Foundation. He is a consultant orthopedic surgeon, like I said, at the Vivekananda Memorial Hospital, Sargu. Uh, in addition to being a member of Regional Steering Committee, South Asia Region, and convener of the National Steering Water Committee, FANSA, which is the Freshwater Action Network, South Asia. His special interests include uh, participatory community development, health systems and hospital administration, community-based health research, Ayurveda and alternative systems in medicine, uh, waste management, the livelihoods promotion initiatives of the VILD Foundation, and environmental conservation, water, sanitation, and hygiene, in community-based rehabilitation and appropriate rural technology programs. Uh, Dr. Sitaram also guides and leads several community development programs at SVY. It's a pleasure to have you, sir, as the speaker today. And the uh, format of the lecture will be as follows. Uh, uh, Dr. Sitaram will speak for about uh, 15 minutes uh, at the beginning on the topic for the day, which is Vivekananda and the practice of uh, practical Vedanta. And this shall be followed by a moderated Q&A uh, participants uh, may please post their questions in the chat box and uh, today's uh, <coughs> closing remarks will be delivered by Professor Bogan Chen. Over to you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ramesh, and uh, thank you, SVIM, for this opportunity um, uh, to share some thoughts on uh, a very important, uh, very interesting, and at the same time, rather confusing uh, topic of uh, practical Vedanta. And uh, the prop that we have um, is actually the best ever prop that one could uh, imagine to have for this particular topic, which is Swami Vivekananda. Uh, so as uh, required, I'll try to share some important thoughts of mine in the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes, and then uh, uh, keep the topic open for some discussion, some inputs from all the learned uh, participants, uh, and trigger some thoughts and discussions on it. Uh, and then uh, uh, hopefully look forward to leaving some food for thought uh, for subsequent practical uh, application of what would be important in one's life. So, um, so I, I generally start with looking at what the key words in a particular topic uh, are. And uh, in this context, it's obvious that there are three key words. One is uh, uh, Swami Vivekananda. The other is practical. And then we have the word Vedanta. So I thought it would be good to start with some thoughts on these three topics, these three keywords, and uh, see where it takes us. So let's uh, start with two of the keywords that we have, practical and Vedanta. Now, practical and Vedanta are often, uh, you know, understood to be separate, to be distinct, and uh, to be sort of, you know, two poles of uh, a particular uh, continuum. Uh, up to ends of a spectrum. Just a couple of days ago, we uh, celebrated uh, Ramanavami, and there is an interesting story about the celebration of Ramanavami, which I thought I'll I'll share. You know, it's always good to start with a story. Uh, we all know that uh, a lot of pujas are organized around, especially around uh, Ramanavami, and in our Sanatana Dharma, there is no dearth for uh, such celebrations and such pujas. Uh, Ram Navami is perhaps one of the best remembered uh, celebrations from our childhood as well, and I'm sure many would uh, would also resonate with this. 
um, one uh, practice is to organize uh, the parayana that is the reading of from the epic of uh, ramayana uh, particularly the sundarakanda part you know all those uh, uh, you know auspicious uh, uh, parayanas which are supposed to bestow the best of things to the person who has organized it and the person who has listened to this and all that so there was once this great devotee who was a uh, 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 you know a very meticulous follower of uh, shri rama and uh, would always uh, organize such parayanas and uh, uh, year, year after year year after year he would do it and multiple people hundreds of people from all villages around would gather and uh, participate listen to it and go back and then twice years passed and then there is this udyapana that is done a bigger celebration of all celebrations and this was also organized by our great devotee and to that udyapana came a learned person and uh, after all the celebration this learned person had one simple question to our devotee he said of all the great values that shri rama stood for what are those key values that you have adopted in your life now at this question our devotee was flabbergasted he said it's sacrilege it's blasphemy Shri Rama is the avatar of God. He is God Himself. He is Maryada Purushottama. How can I, a mere mortal, a mere human being, ever try to be like Him? I am a human being. I am into this samsara. I am into my business. But then Ram is Ram. So He has all His values. I have all my life, and all that I can do is to worship Him and then get back to my life. this actually is a good starting point for all of us because as we introspect there is this element of a devotee in each one of us we always read a lot of good things about big values in life but at the end of it you know we get back to our old kannada proverb which says shastra iro helake badnaka iro tinnake you know you have all the shastras which tell you 100 things but then when it comes to your stomach you better respect that uh, the demands that the stomach has so is that what swami vivekananda also felt is that what the vedanta is is all about i think that is something that we need to look at and uh, and look at how vedanta if at all or the values that rama stood for if at all can be imbibed can be inculcated and practiced in our in our actual daily life you know vedanta starts with this exalted and sort of uh, unimaginably big idea vague idea abstract idea that everything is one We seem to have lost the super atmosphere. hello can you hear me yeah we uh, yeah we can, i can we can hear you we lost yeah. you for about uh, i think 2 3 minutes 
that's right i i did notice it um, actually it's raining outside here and we have had a, a outage so no power uh, and no internet so i have shifted over to my mobile okay. and i hope that stands yeah. so I, i hope you can uh, yeah. see me and uh, hear me i'm just uh, yes we can see and hear yeah. yeah fine okay so so i was saying uh, that while vedanta has this exalted view that everything is one it is very difficult for uh, uh, individuals like us to imagine how that oneness could be because we grow with the the idea of multiplicity we always look at multiple identities for ourselves you know we have one identity for our birth we have one identity for our our house we have one identity for our friends you know multiple such uh, hats that we wear and then each person would be similarly multiple and so when we are when we have grown up with that idea of multiplicity this very idea that there could be oneness is something that strikes as completely incongruous however vedanta insists again that there could be that oneness vedanta seems to say that there is one universal truth and in fact uh, it's not just vedanta any religion that you think of all religions ultimately say the same thing there is but one supreme reality now the problem has always been in how do we uh, reconcile the myriad multiple multiples that we see hear feel daily day in and day out in our real life with this abstract idea of oneness vedanta says tat tvamasi but then how do we really practice it how do we really make it practical so now we come to the other key word of practical this practical has very interesting connotation what is practical for me need not be practical for ramesh need not be practical for sudarshan because it all depends on my likes my dislikes if i don't like brinjal then my cooking is not going to include brinjal that is practical for me if i like hiking then trekking then i my holiday will be in himalayas not in any other place so when vedanta says something that is to my liking i might feel that it is practical but then vedanta doesn't say it vedanta seems to say you give up selfishness you be good to others now that is not something that most of us uh, you know like like we like a jamun or we like uh, some cinema or something like that and so how do we reconcile so vedanta again becomes impractical for me so this these challenges are something that come up in uh, real real life and i think that is where swami vivekananda leaves his indelible mark you know it's often uh, uh, the practice in our sanatana dharma that we identify individuals with the core concepts that they stood for like for instance you you talk of uh, shankara and advaita comes to your mind you talk of uh, madhvacharya dvaita comes to your mind so what does swami vivekananda score mean to all of us i feel in my my little limited understanding of uh, swami vivekananda and his uh, life and his message that his core is actually in practical vedanta in making this oneness a practical reality for all people of all walks of life before swami vivekananda also there were uh very evolved souls who practiced it who preached it but then the speciality of swami vivekananda has been in breaking all barriers bringing these concepts which were uh limited to some temples and caves and forests out of those confines into the bustling streets and markets of everyday life not limited to only the so called cognizity and the knowledgeable but make it really realistic even to the last man on the street and that is the greatness of swami vivekananda and that is why i feel uh, 
uh, Vivekananda's messages, even to this day, resonate so well with all people across the globe. So let's try to look at some of his key uh, sayings and his key suggestions on how we can make this a reality. The core of Swami Vivekananda have always been in powerful statements, very short but powerful statements. And we as youngsters, uh, when we formed the organization, we were uh, really moved by many of such powerful statements of Swami Vivekananda. And one such statement in a very pithy way communicates this message of Vedantic oneness. And that is that religion, in Swami Vivekananda's words, is the manifestation of divinity that is inherent in man. If divinity is inherent in man, and that is manifest, and I see it, if I see a man, I have to see divinity. If I see another man, I don't see that man just as a man, but I see that man also as divinity. So you see 100 people, the same divinity. You see 1,000 people, the same, same divinity. That is Vedanta, where you see that there is oneness across board, across all forms of life. We expand this in our limited way and reach that understanding of uh, the oneness that exists in all forms of life and all forms that we see. So for Swami Vivekananda, religion and practice of religion made sense only if it is practical. In fact, uh, uh, Swami Vivekananda delivered a series of lectures on what he believed practical Vedanta was in London in uh, 1896. I think it was in November 19, 1896, where he unequivocally clearly declared that Vedanta would have no meaning if it were not practical. So for him, whatever is impractical is not Vedanta. Vedanta means practicality and therein lies the message for all of us to imbibe in our own little ways and move on. So this, he, he, he in that clearly explains that to start with what you have and what is practical for you and move progressively towards the oneness that Vedanta uh, actually propounds and uh, uh, communicates. So I this actually is explained beautifully in the Upanishads and various scriptures that we have. I wouldn't want to go into those details, uh, but we can uh, share some key concepts uh, and some experiences, some life that I have seen in the past uh, few decades, couple of decades especially, and uh, see where it takes us. Now, there are all these stories that Swami Vivekananda also picks up from. But there is one incident in Swamiji's life that sort of sets him apart from other saffron robed monks, uh, in, in my view. There was this youngster who, in all earnestness, comes to Swami Vivekananda once and says that he wants to study the Gita, he wants to study the scriptures. And Swami Vivekananda very clearly tells him go out to the field and play football you will understand the Gita much better after you have played football. Real life, the activities of daily life are actually meant to refine us and prepare us for the spiritual experience that is inherent in the Gita. And that was the practicality that Swami Vivekananda was talking about. He says that Swami, that he doesn't believe in a religion that doesn't wipe the tear of a from the tear from the eyes of a widow or put bread into the bread of into the plate of a hungry man. So these words give us some information of how we need to imbibe and and actually practice some of these concepts. We have to look at ourselves and see where where it leads us. Pratyaham pratyavekshetha naras charita matmanaha kim no me vashubhis tulyam kim no satpuru shairiti. This is a beautiful Subhashita which says, introspect yourself and look at where you are, from where you were yesterday to where you are today. 
and what you can compare yourself with imnuts be pashubis tulyam or am i still stuck in the animalistic banal basal instincts or am i moving towards the exalted divine uh, daivatvam that we need to look at so i feel that we have practices we we do a lot of things from down to dust we we get up we wash ourselves we work do our chores we do a lot of things so when we apply these concepts to what we do we ask for ourselves we we move towards better so for me if a person with a stinking diabetic foot a wound which is pouring pus comes into the hospital and i see dr prashant doing the dressing of that patient not feeling disgusted not feeling nauseous at, at the stink that the wound is throwing at him that is practical vedanta for me if a tribal child in our school has not come back after his summer vacation and my school teacher goes all the way into the forest in search of this child and brings the child back to the school so that the child can continue education that is practical vedanta for me so that sort of a dedication to what i do irrespective of what i do i sweep the floor i sweep it better than what i did yesterday i i deliver a class i take the class better than what i did yesterday so that sort of a movement focus on what i do from uh, yesterday to today from today to tomorrow that path is what will take us practically from uh, uh, humanistic tendencies towards divinity and that is what swami vivekananda encapsulated in his concepts of uh, practical vedanta so i think i'll uh, take a pause here and uh, hand it over to uh, ramesh to conduct the uh, discussion with his questions and uh, throw it open to uh, the uh, audience as well thank you thank you, thank you dr sitaram i think that was a great opening uh, on uh, what practic practical vedanta is and and i would also uh, you know ask all of the uh, participants here as well as uh, those on youtube if they they can leave their questions if they have any uh, on the, on the chat box uh, one of the things i think we uh, spoke about this offline also is one of the issues is that uh, and and i must also you know uh, play the devil's advocate here and also pose questions that are you know uh, seem apparently contradictory in the in the this one uh one of the issues is that there there is a, a reality uh, which is of this world which seems very real to most people and then there is an ideal i think vivekananda also talks about it that there is an ideal that one must aspire towards uh so in that sense uh one of the things that the you know the the way the dharma itself is structured is that uh, there there is a progress and and the reason the vedanta is at the very end of the uh, vedas is because you you come to it at the very end so in, in one sense uh, you know uh, vivekananda seemed to turn things on its head when he actually spoke of uh, vedanta and and you know made it uh, uh, available to most people when it, it was typically not available uh, to most any uh, reasons you think uh, do you think uh, uh, any reasons why you think he would have done that and, yeah. and how is that uh, and and how how can and and the uh, what i want to bundle into that is also that vedanta is actually philosophical whereas uh, life is uh, you know a material reality so how do we marry the philosophy with the uh, material reality of this so how, what was he trying to convey us yeah uh, i partly agree and partly disagree with uh, what you said uh, while uh, vedanta in its uh, you know nishpatti and uh, the word meaning does indicate that it comes at the end of the study of vedas uh, i think uh, it is also true that it it is intertwined in every activity of ours and in every person's life and uh, even as you mentioned that uh, scriptures focus a lot on first vedas and then vedanta and that seems to be the clear progression there are enough references to say that it need not be so uh and there are multiple explanations given to that and the uh, you know uh, one example that springs to my mind is the story of dharma vyadha uh you know the story where 
in in, in re referred in referred to in mahabharata where there is a, a highly erudite uh, rishi who comes who, who is disturbed by a pair of birds uh, and because of that uh, disturbance he gets angry stares angrily at the bird and the bird uh, uh, are burned they they catch fire and they are burned and then he goes to uh, 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 our seeking arms goes to a grihini and asks for arms the grihini delays coming and uh, the rishi again gets angry stares at her and the rishi and the grihini simply says that i am not a pair of birds that you burned uh, your angry stare is not going to make any difference and this uh, rishi this uh, brahmana uh, scholar is uh, astonished and asks sir how do you know how do you know that uh, my angry stare burned the birds and she says all that i do is serve my husband with all diligence and devotion and that gives me far greater spiritual power than whatever scriptures you have uh, you have read have given you and she further says that much greater is the spiritual evolution of a vyadha of a person of a butcher who sells uh, mamsam who sells meat in this village and go and meet him so the story of dharma vyadha we all know the same person who uh, soils his hands with blood and uh, meat he is a highly evolved soul and how did that happen not by reading scriptures but by actual practice of selflessness by actual practice of that oneness uh, i think in uh, every, each person's life there will be ample opportunity to try and uh, practically inculcate some components of this uh, path you know the uh fourfold uh, explanation towards realization that uh, our scriptures have given uh, the karma yoga you know whatever you do you do with dedication and selflessness that itself will give you uh, a, a progress towards uh, realization of uh, the vedantic truth then you have uh, the raja yoga do that with full concentration let nothing disturb you you know raja yoga and meditation need not be Uh, only when you sit in padmasana and vajrasana and close your eyes it can be when you are doing a surgery it can be uh, when you are doing a correction of your students answer paper so do that with that sort of a focus and that will lead you towards greater uh, spiritual knowledge spiritual evolution similarly bhakti yoga do it with full devotion the uh, patient in front of you is the god the student in front of you is god so do your work with that sort of a devotion towards the person whom you are addressing and the act that you are doing and that will definitely take you towards the gnana part which is realization so i think uh, while it is true that one one will uh, move towards this realization better if there is some amount of grounding of scriptures uh, scriptural knowledge is not a prerequisite and neither is it uh, you know the be all and end all of uh, the eligibility now you have the viveka chudamani which says that uh, uh, you know uh, all this uh, uh, words and description of these things are all uh, only for bhuktaye na tu muktaye uh, so that means that all the knowledge that you gain from scriptures are only the initial part only when you practice it you will actually move towards that realization and so if you can start practicing right away you will actually make better progress and that is what swami vivekananda uh, actually propounded uh, you know the bringing back of all the practical parts into the lives of each and every common man i think was the biggest uh, step that vivekananda took differently from the seers before him uh yeah i uh... the other thing that we spoke about is that uh, you know uh, the uh, the vedanta is is a constant uh, quest towards uh, unity that 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 there is a common thread that connects all of us you know right right from the amoeba to the, uh, the highest evolved uh, human being and yeah. in fact vivekananda himself says i am an exaggeration of the uh, you know amoeba so uh, I, i'm paraphrasing here but Uh, so in that sense you know but one of the things that people struggle with and you know in, in one of the books that we, we read uh, you know of uh, the western disciples writing on vivekananda says that you read him once and then you know go practice what he says because otherwise you know he, his mind works at a pace at which 
you are you, you run the risk of getting totally confused and thrown off and so on. So in that sense, uh, yeah. if you could share some examples from your own life in terms of how, uh, if you have been able to uh, incorporate some of these uh, practical aspects of Vedanta or the practical Vedanta as prescribed by Swami Vivekananda in your day-to-day uh, -day, uh, uh, practice, in your day-to-day -day life as well. So that people, you know, get some benchmark of how it can be done. Uh, yeah, uh, you, you are you are right. Uh, you know, but that realization that uh, from a unicellular amoeba to a highly um, physiologically and functionally, anatomically evolved being of uh, you know Homo sapiens sapiens uh, is the same. Like I was saying, is uh, something that uh, uh, nobody can ever. Uh, uh, understand and explain with any sense of rationality. Which is why Vedanta also insists that these are experiential and not necessarily explainable by the uh, frame of reference that you and I talk of, uh, let's say uh, the gravitational force or uh, apple falling down or things like that. So this is experiential and it is unique to each individual. And that is something that Vedanta completely uh, agrees and insists on. And that is what probably attracted Swami Vivekananda to Vedanta also, you know, both Swami Vivekananda and uh, 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 Guru uh, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. They, they were people who explored, practiced all religions and then stuck to uh, what they seemed the, uh, would be the best way forward. So each one to his own. As I was saying, practicality means what is practical for me and uh, not necessarily to uh, you or maybe to my wife or to my daughter or somebody else. What is practical to that person is true for that person. So there is this unique opportunity that Vedanta provides for each person to explore in his or her own way uh, the path ahead of realization of this oneness. And uh, uh, for, for that particular part, I think there are enough uh, references and opportunities that are created. You know, that is how we have all these 33,000 uh, crore gods, you know, you name it, you have it. And every day out of 365 is a, is a day of festival. You have uh, hundreds of celebrations possible. You pick what you feel is practical for you and move on. And it, it is also important here to say, to see that we respect other uh, um, uh, viewpoints, accommodate other viewpoints, and actually look at moving together, me with my viewpoint and you with yours. It doesn't have to be the same because ultimately the goal is the same and not necessarily the path. So that is something that is uh, uh, very important. And not imposing one's own viewpoints on others, not insisting on uh, the same way that I, I follow should be the way that you follow. You know, this sort of a uh, imposition of uh, viewpoints is something that uh, uh, is, is uh, not at all respected and referred to in Vedanta and Swami Vivekananda also highlighted that. So Swami Vivekananda in fact would say that uh, uh, the Sanatana Dharma believes in making a Christian a better Christian, a Muslim a better Muslim, and a Hindu a better Hindu. Or whatever you are, a better you. So I think that is something that is uh, unique, and that is what needs to be practiced and allowed. If we really do that, then I'm sure there will be much less conflict in our society that we see these days, both at the society level and at the individual level, much less stress, much less con. Uh, conflict, but much greater harmony and peace. So that is something that I feel uh, uh, is the message inherent in both Vedanta and the way Swami Vivekananda explained it and uh, suggested the practice of it. Uh, does that answer uh, your question? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. To, to, to a large extent, but I was also looking at, uh, but I, I understand the difficulty of also, uh, but I think you answered the question, the, the second part of the question where I said, is there, are there any uh, practical examples by saying each person individual and I completely yeah. agree that has to find his or her own uh, uh, means uh, towards uh, 
getting yeah. to that uh, practicality yeah. of uh, the uh, day to day uh, life I, just a uh, you know connected question you know uh, we we actually live in in a kind of uh, world where you know we we live where we, people are uh, you know uh, the practicality of uh, work is about you know people talk about work life balance uh, how the, how they can balance life with work yeah. the the assumption being that you have to suffer work and live life uh, and and i i have constantly held this point uh, you know opinion that you cannot balance the work and life because uh, i mean the only work that you have to do is to work on your own life i mean so, uh, <laughs> so so uh, having you know uh, said that i also wanted your thoughts on how practical vedanta uh, can actually help but this is a real problem that people face you know they they uh, they normally yeah. carry work into their personal life or li- or life into their work and and one one suffers from the other and and at both ends so I, I, uh, how this practical understanding of some level to some level understanding practical vedanta would help uh, people yeah uh, interesting question and something that i have also dwelt uh, at length on and um, and it's quite likely that i'll ruff, ruffle some feathers when i say that i do not believe much in this uh, modern concept of balancing life separately and work separately um for me work and life is one single continuum uh, so this is a view point that i've held like i said uh, i might uh, rub people the wrong way when i say this but for me that is vedanta in fact and uh, and ramesh interestingly you said uh, you carry uh, work stresses and run away from work stresses into life but i've seen people who run away from life stresses into work as well yeah so that's what i yeah it works both ways <laughs> it works both ways uh, but the question here is where are you running away from and I, I think you got uh, muted. Yeah, uh, really. Uh, yeah, we can hear you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, question is, who is doing the running? It's the same you. And who are you running away from? It's the same people. And where are you running away to? So it's the same environment. So I think, uh, like I was saying earlier, we tend to create all these multiple, uh, you know, identities for ourselves. and try to live in each identity separately which is uh, you know virtually impossible you know it's like let's say i i am seeing myself in a mirror and i see one image and let's say i take a hammer and break that uh, mirror and the mirror shatters into 100 pieces and i see 100 me does that mean that i am each each one is a different me no it's the same me and that is what vedanta says you cannot run away from this compartment to the next you have to be the same you and how can you bring harmony into into the multiple hats that you wear multiple roles that you play is i think something that's extremely important and we have uh, uh, many references from the upanishads around this but then bringing bringing that down to what uh, uh, is more relatable to you and me as mere mortals i i don't i don't know i'm pulling you down into this oh. uh, i know you are sco- scholarship and all that but then for people like us bringing it down to something that can be chewed on more easily uh, like the bhagavad gita which uh, very clearly says that you know is the same you so you you do your work well and uh, that is how you move from one stage to the next and uh, you know um, gita was uh, actually um, a discourse given to arjuna in one of the most stressful situations that one can imagine a battlefield where you are about to be killed by your enemies and uh, krishna says do your duty so uh, you know what more stress can one have than you know facing the enemy's arrows and uh, be condemned to death there so there also it is work so you do your work well and i'm sure you lead your life very well and uh, again gita tells us many things about how to handle it but i like one uh, muktaka from uh, uh, dv gundappa dvg's uh, uh, mankuti manakagga which i think is uh, very relevant to what you what you mentioned this uh, you know dual uh, life that we try to live one outside one inside uh, we need to get a harmony between those two so how do we do that 
there is this uh, uh, this thing in uh, mankuti manna kaga which says horage loka sakti olage sakala virakti you do your work with complete involvement but no attachment because in inside you be detached from what you are doing so that will be a protection for yourself horage karya dhyana olage udasina horage samskruti bhara olag adara tatsara vara yoga marga vidu mankutima so you do all that work and uh, in the uh, in the bhagavad gita also uh, krishna says the same thing that you do all your work but without the uh, attachment to the work that you do involvement is fine but attachment is what brings uh, that stress either in work or at uh, uh, life so for me life and work is one continuum i can't separate the two out that that definitely is all pervading and i i need to focus on what i am doing at that particular point of time now here is the most important message that vedanta also says you know past is something that shouldn't burden your present worry of future shouldn't uh, you know uh, impede your concentration on the present and if you can do that i think that will be the best way you know that's what i do when i do a surgery i, I can't keep uh, getting worried about what happened yesterday i cannot really Uh, be bogged down by the worries about what might happen to the patient i have to focus on what i am doing today and similarly in this conversation i know i have a few patients waiting outside uh, still to to uh, for me to see the x rays and give that give prescription but if i am focusing there then this gets affected so i, I feel living moment by moment focusing on what we do uh, with with utmost dedication can be the best way forward to get that balance as well this life work is a continuum trying to separate the two out and saying that okay i have 10 kilograms less uh, work than life now so let me add and balance that i think that's uh, rather a um, uh, 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 erroneous method of uh, addressing uh, the stresses and practices uh, that uh, pra- uh, life practice in my view there is an aligned question which uh, you know is which is also you know very popular in the in uh, in the pop culture the, which is uh, the question of saying that uh, choose a uh, choose work that you enjoy and then you know uh, or uh, if you can't then you know uh, start to uh, love the work that you are doing now uh, you know i i have for long uh, you know try to do you know i have a long disagreed with it because Uh, it, it's not easy for people to choose uh, the work that they truly enjoy because that there are realities of life that people have to live through and which which is about being practical and uh, it is not always easy for people to love the work that they do if they're looking at work only as a means to an end which is to take yeah. care of their uh, personal requirements and <clears throat> life so in any thoughts on this because this also is a, a serious conundrum that people uh, face on a daily basis yeah yeah uh- very true and i uh, completely resonate with uh, both those view points it's important to uh, have your your goals and if your goal is a limited goal of let's say becoming a doctor for instance you know that's something that uh, as as students uh, many of our parents uh, encourage children to have a, a goal of or becoming an engineer or becoming a b c if that is a goal by itself it is extremely finite and limited so if that is not done then you you tend to get into uh, all sorts of depression and uh, desperation but if we can ask ourselves why why do you want to become a doctor maybe it could be to help people let's say helping people can be done by myriad ways so set your goal a bit higher and you will see that not getting not getting the first of your goals is no limitation there are there are other ways of reaching that goal so if you if you fall in love with the goal number 1 of becoming a doctor then you are likely to get all the more frustrated if you don't do it if you don't get it but if you can go one step higher and see what's the outcome of you becoming a doctor and try to reach it from other uh, modalities then you'll start liking the way 
that an engineering career of, uh, offers or a teacher career offers to reach the same goal. So I think that is when you, uh, you know, systematically up your bar from one level of uh, uh, satisfaction and contentment to the higher, to the higher, as you move in the hierarchy of objectives. And then you see that the same level of uh, self-actualization can be achieved irrespective of what uh, profession you follow. And this is something that I have, I have seen, uh, like I was saying, you know, I'm giving the uh, example of uh, our doctors and teachers and, uh, you know, I've seen that sort of a dedication in uh, virtually all walks of life, a gardener who does, that, who does his or her gardening with utmost dedication lives a contented life. And it's not necessarily that he started off liking to be a gardener. So there is definitely this uh, both uh, uh, ways forward, not condemning the first way of getting what you like. I, I'm not condemning that. I'm not uh, discrediting that. It is important to set your goals, but do not be limited by that goal because that's not the only way of reaching the next level of goal because it's only a means and not the end by itself. So, uh, you know, even uh, at the personal level, when I started off uh, my career, uh, I had uh, no idea that I would become a doctor. Um, my, I come from a family of engineers and teachers. So when I was in uh, my 10th grade and uh, in my pre-university, all that I had in mind was I'll probably become an uh, engineer or maybe go into pure sciences. Uh, I was... Uh, a great enthusiast of astronomy and uh, uh, space sciences. So uh, uh, I had in my own mind half decided that I would be uh, into those uh, fields. But then uh, on uh, one fine day on the Ganesha Chaturthi day, when I was actually sitting down to do the puja, I, something happened and decided I'll join medicine. You know, I, I came in. The point is that having come into medicine, if I had continuously uh, had this inner uh, sense of inadequacy that, hey, I wanted to be that and now I'm stuck here, then I think I would have uh, been a misfit. Uh, uh, I would have struggled all through. But instead, I made peace with this decision because it was a decision I made. I pursued that with uh, the same sort of dedication that uh, would be expected from a person who wanted to be a doctor from beginning. And then, you know, uh, whatever I have done has given me satisfaction. And that is where the personal uh, component comes in because I am practicing it and the satisfaction is mine. So that way, uh, choosing what you want to do and liking what you do, both have a role and uh, both have their sanctity as well. Um, and the, both the modalities lead us to a higher objective, which is what we should be looking at, not be limited to the means itself, but go to the end. There are two questions in the chat box. So uh, one, I think, uh, is about uh, the concept of uh, Maya in the context of practical Vedanta. I think it is uh, just to give something, uh, my own thoughts on this is that I think it comes from a, a, a belief that Maya is actually an illusion, whereas my own, my own understanding of Maya is that it's actually the, it's not the negation of the world as we see it, but rather, yeah. Uh, a viewpoint where where we say that uh, to for a large uh, for a large section of the population or for most people uh, the reality of who we actually are the divinity within is not revealed and and it's only revealed at a particular point in time when we have reached a particular stage in life and uh, and therefore and that is the whole concept of maya that you live in this uh, illusory for lack of a better word word but you but there is the possibility of a greater uh, uh, reality, which is uh, real. But I just wanted uh, your thoughts also in, the, in terms of... Uh... Yeah. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Again, you know, this... Uh, uh, when you delve deeper into these uh, terminologies and uh, uh, the conceptual descriptions and uh, complexities, I'm sure we are going to get lost. Yes. And uh, uh, Maya is one such thing, the Vikshepa Shakti, all those things mm -hmm. when, you, when you start talking. It's quite likely to confuse, confound people. Uh, but 
what is also true is uh, like you just now mentioned uh, this illusion is not necessarily something that applies and is appreciated by everybody and vedanta very clearly uh, says this as well uh, while the paramarthika satya is of that one uh, all pervading uh, uh, unity uh, which is uh, tat um, there is also the vyavaharika satya which uh, says that you and i are separate and we have our uh, dealings our transactions so the transactional reality cannot be completely negated and even the uh, shankara uh, advaita also accepts that Yes. there is also a pratibhasika satya which is a additional illusion which we imagine uh, in our own minds which many times drives uh, decisions in our lives which is the tragedy even if we come to the vyavaharika satya and understand life as a true transaction as it is in its real terms we would be better off but many times we are misled by our perceptions which are not necessarily true which reflects a pratibhasika satya so the maya that we are probably trying to look at is that pratibhasika satya and if we can focus on the vyavaharika part the transactional satya part and lead our lives true to the vyavaharika satya i think the paramarthika satya will take care of itself over a period of time you know uh, like, uh, you know i we have this uh, raju sarpanyaya you know the mm. uh, snake and the rope illusion uh, wherein you you mistake a, a rope for a snake it's dark you can't see what it is you see something lying there it looks like a rope but it could be a snake so now if you think it is a snake then that thought will induce a lot of physiological changes in you which is not maya that is true your pulse start racing your breathing starts you know becoming more rapid you are shivering you are frightened you are waiting to run away but then when you go closer you see that no it's not a serpa it is raju it's after all a rope then you are all oh, okay you are all calm fine oh now there is no fear so that is something that happens now the danger here is that supposing tomorrow you come to the same place and you see the same thing there and with your previous experience that you saw that to be a rope you still assume that it is a rope today you just walk in without examining and it turns out to be a snake you know these <laughs> things happen so that is when that is why vedanta says that you have to be now and here don't be misled by the past experiences don't be misled by your vasanas you know that is where we are try- we are we are likely to uh, miss our step and fall into the pratibhasika vyavaharika samsaras but be true to that particular moment examine that moment and move ahead so if you really st- stop for a while at that point of time examine whether it is a rope or a snake and then take appropriate action you are not stressed you, you 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 don't have the fear fright flight response so that is what i feel uh, is the uh, approach towards these concepts of maya uh, in practical real life that i feel we have to take uh, i hope that has answered the yeah, question absolutely i think uh, already people are saying it's a very good answer sir Uh, there's one last question before we go to the concluding remarks that is uh, a rather uh, comment with a question which says it says that uh, uh, pr- the practice of a righteous life is the guiding grossly simplified philosophy of vedanta that you know leading a righteous life by okay. itself is the is the very philosophy of practice of vedanta do we really need to add the practical prefix to vedanta i mean you could just uh, because the vedanta by itself is very uh, you know uh, practical so why the prefix is what yeah you know like i said uh, that is very true you know that is very true but then uh, uh, vedanta means multiple things to multiple people and practice also uh, you know different people have different practices uh, you know i gave the basic the very very mundane example of food habits what is right for me need not be right for you and uh, what 
uh, is a career for you may not be a career for me. So that sort of a variation is the reality of life. So, uh, you know, um, if, if you are a professor in a college, then the way you lead your life is obviously going to be different from, let's say, a soldier uh, who has his own guiding principles. Now, where does Vedanta fit in to that person's life? And, uh, you know, taking this uh, a bit further and looking at, let's say, a, a politician or let's say a thief for that matter. For thief, mm -hmm. thieving is reality. That's his livelihood. You know, you, you, he has to do it well uh, without getting caught. So, you know, these dimensions uh, bring in uh, the multiplicity of applicability of Vedanta also. And, uh, and therefore, there is a variation that, that uh, is inherent when we talk of practicing it. So I think that is where each one has to look at Vedanta from his viewpoint, his own lens, and see how that can be absorbed and uh, uh, you know, practically uh, inculcated. Uh, again, you know, stepping out of uh, the, um, uh, you know, the confusing jungle of uh, Vedas and Vedantas coming down to the Bhagavad Gita, uh, I think uh, what we do should be done well. If that is practiced, I think there is a lot of, uh, uh, you know, message for us there. Uh, the 17th chapter wherein uh, Krishna answers Arjuna's question of, I don't know Shastra, I don't know how to lead a righteous life, but can I still proceed? Can I still progress spiritually? And Krishna says, yes, definitely yes. If your intentions are right, if your Shraddha is right, in whatever you do, I'm sure you will move, move ahead. Basically, you do things with three Karanas, the Kaya, Vacha, Manasa, and three main things that we do the uh, dana, tapa, and walk. So if you can do these three things in the right way, uh, with the right intention, then uh, a, a lot of uh, positivity can be brought in. And so uh, I think uh, that sort of a contextualization uh, uh, for each person will be necessary. Uh, and therefore, probably the prefix of Vedanta. So how do I apply it in my life? So uh, we say uh, uh, that you can do tapas by just speaking. You don't have to go to the forests. You don't have to sit in uh, a cave. You don't have to stand on one leg. You speak well to your friends, to your people. Then that itself is a wangmaya tapas. So can we do? Can we all do that? So each one has a environment of his or her own. As a doctor, I talk to patients. As a teacher, uh, one may talk to students. So can that speech be true and intentionally good so that it takes you to a higher level of uh, uh, Vedantic reality? So that way, contextualization to my particular environment is practical Vedanta. I think uh, that, is the, that was the last question. And now I think uh, uh, before I hand it over to uh, Professor Govind Sharma for the concluding remarks, I want to say that uh, this... The series will continue for uh, eight more episodes. It's, been, it's brought to you by the Vivekananda Institute of Indian Studies, which is unit of SVYM. So we'll have on the 12th of every month uh, till the end of uh, this year. So uh, over to uh, Professor Govind Sharma for his concluding remarks in today's uh, episode. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ramesh Venkatraman. Uh, am I audible? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Okay, okay, all right. Thank you very much. In fact, it's a, a pleasure to be associated with Dr. M. R. Sitaram, because Sitaram is uh, Dr. Sitaram is one person who has been practicing this practical Vedanta in his real life. Uh, my own personal experience is that during COVID-19, when we had a serious, uh, you know, issue at home, almost a, uh, coming almost to a tragedy. You know, he almost came in like a brother. I have a brother by name Sitaram, and now I have a second brother. His name is also Sitra, who helped us, you know, get out of that uh, issue. What it says is, actually what it means is, he's the right person to speak about this because he has put all these things into practice. Must be in several other occasions also, you, in fact, you asked him a very right question. Can you give us some example? Actually, he could have given this example. I would have very happily accepted and endorsed his, uh, you know, example. 
one uh, this one is uh, of course vedanta the vedanta itself even though at the first abstraction appears like the end of vedas indeed it is the real meaning of vedanta is the essence of vedanta and what is the essence of vedanta in my very little understanding of what vedanta is i am not a scholar like uh, ramesh uh, would be uh, my own little understanding of vedanta is that actually you know everything is brahman all of us are in, uh, truly of course i am also an advaiti uh, you know it is we are all brahman but the thing is uh, we fail to recognize it basically because our identity with the body and mind is so strong what we call it as maya or whatever it is the terminology as dr mr has very rightly said actually could confuse you because of our identity is so strong that you know we are unable to recognize the the truth and therefore comes the question of uh, you know the practicality of vedanta vedanta by itself need not have to be practical because this is the absolute truth there is no doubt about it but after having been hit by an arrow as buddha says if you are hit by an arrow there is no need for you to be there is no meaning for you to be questioning from where the arrow came was the person who hit the arrow was it a brahmin or a kshatriya was he black or white all that you have to do it is try to now try to find out how to save yourself from that arrow so even here also we are the ignorance we are the maya we have whatever we would like to call it as which is actually another great illusion now how do we get out of it since it is the reality now the uh, reality as is being apparent now and uh, here for all of us is that you know we are an identity separate from that brahman how do we get out of it these are the things that dr mrs really said in fact there if there is one particular take away that is one popular thing that we all speak about one important take away from dr mrs uh, talk today is that you know living in the moment actually if you want to be a true vedanti live in the moment what does it mean whatever it is you see what we are is actually the result of what we understand it as karma you see each one of us is potentially divine all those things are well said but because of how we have lived our life because of our own choices maybe we are strong we are weak you know both physically mentally all these things you know make us suitable for a particular task in this life whether i choose you know because, see choosing to be a doctor or being given the post of the doctor are two different things if you are given the the post of a doctor if you are given the post of prime minister of india then it is probably your uh, satkarma but then let us say you have been forced to become then it's a different thing but what it says is by his uh, very statement living in the present moment whatever may be the state in which you have been placed right now because of your past karmas try to move from light to light or darkness to darkness you know from darkness to light never ever move from darkness to darkness this is the words of buddha what it really means is because of your past compulsion that is your karmas and all those things maybe you have been put into a very inconvenient position maybe you are very poor maybe you are ignorant maybe you are sick but instead of blaming the entire world for that is it possible for you to in that moment to say okay maybe it happened for whatever reasons x y z it is not very important for us to know even the reasons but then what is that i can do to move from this darkness to light suppose you know you have been doing very good karmas and because of the accumulation of punya you have been placed in a very convenient position instead of saying you know everything happened because of my so i don't have to be doing anything else to anybody say how is that i could be using this for the betterment of everybody else then that is moving from light to light but then some people move from light to darkness because they think that you know it's all because of them and therefore you know instead of moving from light to light they will be moving from light to darkness this is one beautiful uh, you know take away from dr mrs listen because it's a very very practical tool in fact we uh, you know mrs also mentioned about you know you are closer to god in the you know in the field playing football rather than in bhagavad gita i fully endorse in fact if i had not changed my clothes i would have been in a t-shirt with the uh, mba you know <laughs> nmit printed on it because today we had actually you know uh, sports day and uh, even though i am 66 i played with all the listener you know, students and then i really enjoyed those uh, well, you know four or five hours i was with the students maybe i was nearer to god then probably when i would be reading bhagavad gita 
so dvg quoted uh, <laughs> exhaustively dvg and uh, dvg you know our own uh, brahmananda says actually dv uh, mankutimana kadha is uh, kannada's bhagavad gita one thing that uh, made appeal to me is that there is one uh, prava id adalli one mankutimana kadha dalli vandide omme kale kootadalli omme hoodotadalli omme shastradalli mattomme sangeetadalli omme maunadalli mattomme samsaradalli brahmanu bhaviyaga mankutimma if you truly want to be a vedanta whatever is the stage whatever you see actually i cling on to the same statement the present moment whatever is it giving to me am i in a garden well from a hoodota dali suppose i am in the you know company of friends kelakuta means you know friends if i am in the company of friends can i see god in that company if i am in a garden can i see god in that flowers and all those things or when i am reading shastra of course that is also god but then it could be sangeeta also music is there see because many of the people have touched god through sangeeta with the divine music itself we all know the story or in an hour or two hours in a day in contemplation peace you know very silent meditation where you even close your eyes basically because you want to stop the inputs or very busy in life samsara dali probably picking up a fight with your wife or the good of uh, the family or whatever it is with the students whatever it is you know bhagavad gita ramaya this, this uh, mahabharata and bhagavad gita is entirely you know how to be in this battle of life and yet to be near to you know the vedanta so brahmanu bhavyag i think uh, he has summed it and i think essentially i would like to say that you know actually there is one more uh, lesson in bhagavad gita which says buddhi yukto jahati ha ube sukruta duskrute tasmat yoga ya yujjasva yoga ha karma samposhana mm-hmm. this is what uh, dr mrs also very rightly said actually you know if you want to be closer to this uh, vedanta do the act without really expecting this and how is it possible also basically because it is by practice buddhi yukto a person who is endowed with wisdom will not ask for the the results of uh, the action buddhi yukto jahati ha jahati iha here itself he will cast away both the good and bad why basically because both good and bad are like you know whether you throw diamond into water or a stone a rock into water it will cause ripples he says you know don't do either of those things just do what you are supposed to be don't expect any results it's very difficult to you know actually put it into practice because so we are so much involved with the mind and body but my own uh, experience if i had to say is i personally feel that i am much better than what i was about 10 years uh, earlier both physically mentally or basically because at a very small moment is it possible for you to make a small change be very you know try to improve that uh, level of consciousness are you aware are you aware i think that is the the key to becoming the, you know applying to uh, vedanta dr mrs it was uh, really a pleasure speaking to you and uh, we have all enjoyed you know having cup of coffee and discussing at uh, you know the wheel it uh, place and i wish to be spending more time with you thank you very much sir thank you and thank thanks you. Uh, venkatram for giving me this opportunity thank you very much <clears throat> ramesh yeah so <laughs> as so thank you very much uh, sir uh, it was again great uh, to listen to you um, you summed it up very well and your, the references that you gave were also, were also extremely apt and even as we wait for ramesh to rejoin i'm not sure what has happened uh, you are uh, you know you are extremely well read uh, but you are again reference to mankuti mana kagga Uh, reminded me of another very very uh, meaningful uh, muktaka which i thought uh, would be uh, relevant to quote here it says iruva kelasava madu kiridenade manavittu focus on whatever uh, work you are doing there is nothing big nothing uh, small in what work you do sweep well if you are a sweeper uh, operate well if you are a surgeon uh, you know play well if you are a sports ಇರುವ ಕೆಲಸವ ಮಾಡು ಇರಿದೆನ್ನದೆ ಮನವಿಟ್ಟು ದೊರೆತುದ ಹಸಾದವೆಂದು ಒಣಗಿಡದೆ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟೆಡ್ 
without regrets without complaints accept it with grace then move on dharisu lokada bharava never ever forget that there is a paramartha there is a higher goal that you have to reach so don't be satisfied with uh, small gains always look at the bigger uh, objective in life and then horadu something that uh, i like very much iruva kelasava maadu kiridenade manavittu doretuda hasada vendundu gonagidade dharisu lokada bharava paramarthavannu bidade horadu kare barallalade manchitimma so i think uh, that's a beautiful uh, well, very well uh, communicated uh, message from uh, yes. that sums it yes yes yeah yes that sums it so i think uh, as uh, even again as we wait for uh, uh, ramesh uh, oh no, i just came back i got locked okay, out okay fine <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i think i think uh, wanted to thank everyone i think this has been a most uh, I, I hope it's uh, everybody, everybody's finished their concluding remarks and all that. And uh, wanted to thank thank all all of you who came on board, the, those here, those on YouTube as well. A recording of this will also be posted on YouTube shortly, and uh, we will continue to have these on the twelfth of every month uh, till December uh, to the end of uh, this year. So thank you and uh, thank you, Dr. Sitaram. I think this was. I think the comments are very clearly saying. That, one of the most enlightening uh, discourses on uh, swami vivekananda and uh, we want to thank, thank you, you and thank you very much and on behalf of vis as well thank everybody here thank you and have a great uh, thank you thank you namaste Thanks, thank, thank, you. You, sir. Thank, thank you thank you thank you thank you uh, goin sharma ji thank you ramesh thank, thank you, you sir thank you bye